Ay, 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 How are you? Could not hear you clearly. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, bad I'll, connection. I'll try to speak up. So um, I'm I'm recording tonight. And, now uh, I hope I and uh, good afternoon there. Mm -hmm. I am keeping you wonderful. Likewise, it's very late for you. So, um, so welcome to our conversation with uh, Bethany Woodworth, who is going to tell us about her work um, engaging faculty across the disciplines in climate conversation. And we're just going to have a conversation about that tonight. So um, why don't you give us a little bit of an overview? Okay, sorry. I'm a bit of a wet rat here. I just got out of the okay, shower. Over, over. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, um, well, I'm really fortunate that um, our work with you guys for the last couple of years has kind of lit a fire in a couple of other people in our uh, at our university. And in particular, some of my colleagues in the Planetary Health Council, which got started two years before the teach-in, um, have really jumped in. And so we put our heads together this year, and um, we are planning an event on March 29th. We just had a planning meeting about it today. And, um, but, I mean, you guys have seen my email about how it went. So I won't go too much into depth, but the idea was that we Actually, really Beth, wanted... You, you, when, yes? Since we were recording this, you should uh, give us some background in all of this. And Sure. Um, so don't assume that the people who are... Yeah. Well, I think you all understand the frustration of trying to get people to teach climate change who, for whom either they're not comfortable because it's not in their field or they're not sure how it's relevant. And um, we had a brainstorm that in order to get people involved, I guess this all followed from my sabbatical work a few years ago in which I was researching, especially, you know, climate change across the curriculum and what came out of that was I wanted to have a workshop where faculty from all different disciplines would come together and you could convince them that take a course which you have existing learning outcomes and figure out how you could um, teach those learning outcomes using climate change examples, climate change concepts. Um, like if you're going to talk about market failures, you've got to be talking about climate changes market failure, for example, in, in economics, or um, if you're going to talk about uh, inequality and, um, you know, across the globe, and you can talk about differences in vulnerability to climate change, um, ethics, the whole ethics of climate change. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it, you guys, I don't, I'm preaching to the choir, it, it touches every subject, there's not a single subject I can think of in the university curriculum that doesn't have something to do with climate change. The problem is that the, that in order to have a, have a workshop, the idea was to have people come bring their syllabi, look at their syllabi, figure out what could, which of these outcomes could I teach using climate change. And our challenge, of course, is that we get the usual suspects, people who are already thinking about climate change and are maybe even already incorporating it. So the brainstorm was to convince our dean uh, the deans of two of our undergraduate colleges to allow us to do a workshop during the semester, the opening semester Dean's Day. Well, they call it cast days. This year we had um, the day on January 12th. It's a full day of um, interactive, you know, usually um, a variety of things get done during cast day. This year it was a joint session of, so it was a bi-college session between the Westbrook College of Health Professions and the College of Arts and Sciences. So all of the faculty are expected to come. Not everybody comes, but it so it guarantees a wide swath of people who feel obligated or want to come to the cast day. And he gave us 90 minutes in the morning when people were still fresh and before people scattered and right before lunch. So right after the workshop, everybody could hang out and continue their conversations. So the workshop involved, um, we had about 120 faculty there from the two colleges. Um, they were seated in round tables of about eight each, and we had them sit with people in similar disciplines. So we had the humanities sit together, we had the business um, sit together, the social work, um, and, and 
um, each table had a moderator and we drew a lot of our moderators for the tables from the same people who spoke at the teaching we had last year. Because we did your model of a teaching um, from BARD where you have faculty from all different disciplines talk about how it connects to their climate, you know, climate change effects to connects to their discipline. So we knew that they were already in that mode. And so each table had a moderator, usually someone who spoke last year. Um, and we were we challenged them for about 90 minutes with a series of questions, asking them, you know, whether they could think of ways that climate change connected to their disciplines, whether they could, you know, and we asked everybody to bring their syllabus. So part of it was take a look at your syllabi and your learning outcomes. Where could you fit climate change into that? And the outcome of several rounds of, of kind of alternating reflection and reporting out and 90 minutes is not much time. I was really worried about that, but it worked out okay. And at the end they had, they put their, conclusions on sheets of butcher paper. We were doing things the old fashioned way and we put them up around the room. And that way during the lunch period, people could wander around and see what the other groups had thought of. A um, Couple of the things that we did to supplement it was, um, I'd say three things. One is we put some effort into finding usually graphics online, but it, I also created a few new graphics that we put in, made, posted, printed out into big color posters and put them around the room. So you can find online things on psychology and climate change or you know, the social drivers of climate change or climate equity. Um, I had to create one for climate change and sports for our sports professionals. Um, there's lots of stuff about health and we are a health, we are, you know, Westbrook College of Health Professions obviously is very concerned with health. So we had the posters around the room to try and jog people's thinking. We had a table of books in the back of climate change in different disciplines. There's an amazing wealth of books. Um, I have my own library. And then we also had the library come over and bring all their climate change books and people could check them out as they came. And finally, um, we printed out little packets, little cheat sheets, if you would, with little pointers for things that they could talk about in case they were sitting at their table and people couldn't think of connections. And so at the end, we had them fill out a survey and we asked people to let us know if they'd be willing to kind of report out at a at a uh, session in at the end of March, and that is the March 29th event. So we had four different volunteers, one from the arts, one from biology, one from nursing. I can't remember where the other one's from, who've all said that they would be willing to share their experiences now having taken some climate change into the classroom and report back out. So that's what our March 29th event will be. It will be a webinar in the middle of the day um, called Solve Climate by 2030, Make Climate a Class. And then these four people will report out on their experiences and, and we'll have a student moderator. And we're still in the planning stages. But one thing you'll be glad to know is that, you know, the University of New England has kind of bought into this, you know, we're part of Solve Climate for 20, by 2030. We're going to do this every year. So our university has branding from the last couple of years. Marine from the communications offices you know, making the lower thirds and they just, they, they our communications office is amazing. And they've adopted this as kind of, they, we've kind of gotten them into this feeling like, okay, we do this every year, which is, I'm so happy to, to see that. And this is our third year because we canceled in the year of the pandemic. So this will be our third event. I think that's everything that I can tell you and feel free to ask me questions. So I tried to give you thorough description, but not for anybody, I hope. <laughs> This is great. So um, Evan's about to ask a question, but let me ask one first. Uh, in terms of the, the faculty members who were there, how many of them would you say felt like they this was a, a real stretch for them to be thinking about climate change and uh, how it related to their field of study? You know, it's kind of hard because we, you know, at the end, we showed them a QR code and said, please go to this survey. And we actually followed up and said, please take this survey so we could find that out. So my impression is just from the tables that I circulated around because I didn't moderate. I wanted to be there to troubleshoot. Um, and my colleagues and I kind of circulated. And I would say I found about an equal number of tables where the people are were really struggling with this as a foreign idea and other tables that were like, oh, we already do this all the time. Like the nursing faculty were like, we already do this. 
interdisciplinary stuff and we already deal with the impacts of climate change, which was nice to hear. Um, I'm not convinced that they do it to the extent that, you know, or the in the way that I would wish that they would, but that's not my, you know, they're the professionals in their field. They get to decide. And then um, and then a lot, some people in the middle. I was really pleased when our biology professor stood up, and I know he teaches a lot of climate change in his bio, in his introductory bio class, which is on communities and populations. I know he talks about it, but he got up and was talking about, so he already does this. So he was trying to figure out how he could incorporate climate justice. I was like, wow, that's great. Like he's not just stopping at climate. He's like thinking about, so he's one of the people who volunteered to speak. Um, at the webinar on March 29th, and we'll record that. You can see, you know, I'll make it available to you guys. But the um, the event in the um, on Dean's Day was not recorded. The real the real brainstorm was finding a venue where we could get lots of people who might not normally come. I would say if we had had that event and invited people, I would have been surprised if we'd had ten people. You know, right, right. <laughs> Mm -hmm. so hopefully it did some good but we figured you know we kept like we were so worried and we're comes all these well it can't hurt you know if nothing else 120 yeah. people sat around and talked about how to put climate change into their class for 90 minutes you know maybe it you know whether or not they do it this semester or whatever but yeah i mean that's just really wonderful yeah um, and um I, so replicability uh, do you think this could be done at uh, other schools? It sounds like the, the magic was really having that day. Yeah, and it was only 90 minutes. Yeah. I think it's replicable if you, um, but the timing of the traditional make climate a class um, doesn't match up with it, right? Sure. You know, because it's in the middle of the semester. And the reason we wanted to do it before the semester started was because we wanted people to have time to modify their syllabi so we yeah. had to have it at least a week you know like a week before classes started that's and then we had it two thing. snow days so it ended up being two weeks before classes started but that's I mean, another that's, that is the right time to do this i mean you don't want to do it you know the week before i mean you mm -hmm. really to, and it's getting to be you know sort of too late to ask people to do this you know not yet but um i'm going to be reaching out to i've done a lot of group outreach and i'm going to start my individual outreach around make climate a class tomorrow Mm -hmm. um, and send emails to people that I know should have signed up and haven't um, to, to get the numbers up. Because, I mean, the, the beauty of this, right, is that, you know, if you've got 100 and just say you've got 100 faculty talking to students about climate change, you know, that is uh, at least 2,000 students, mm -hmm. right, who, who, are, who are hearing from them. Well, let me caution you. If they do it in more than one class, then yeah, <laughs> then it's four thousand students, right? So, well, you know, we got them talking to each other for ninety minutes about it. What yeah. percentage of those actually taught? That's what we wanted to get out of the survey, and we didn't have very good response yeah. on the survey. Lesson learned: we figured, well, QR code, maybe faculty. You know, that's a different generation. We've learned to start using QR codes because we're interacting with students, but we should have just had something easier for us old timers but but um well, you can, in you terms of them. you got their names right so you can contact them at the end of the semester and ask them yeah to do it. yeah and we've sent out follow-up emails asking people but i would say um yeah we know and we have uh in terms of repl replicability again i mean i get i haven't taught at other universities but i'd be willing to bet that they all have faculty development days and the key is getting um getting the dean or whoever is responsible yours call it you know we have CETL which is our um center for excellence in teaching and learning um you know getting them to buy into the idea of having a 90 minute um session on this in a day when everybody's expected to be there it could be a dean's day it could be a faculty development day but i'm betting that every university has this kind of thing now that the people really are expected to go to i think it's typically mm -hmm. offered okay you know there's there's enrichment workshops and if you're interested. yeah so that, well that's that, a start too you might not be able to get everybody there but yeah. um yeah. and then if you advertise it as you know 
yeah, it, it, it's a bit of a chicken egg thing, I think. Um, yeah. Yep. Um, but I mean, what was encouraging to me is that, you know, given the opportunity, 120 people wanted to do it. You know, they didn't actually really have much choice. They came to Dean's Day. That was the thing. Because right. we weren't, so they were not a self selected group, but that was part of, that was really part of what we wanted to do. I will say that afterwards, the, the, the dean came up to us, when he came up to Alethea and said it was the best faculty development um, thing we've had since he came to the college, which was five years ago. There is some faculty development thing that happens. Is that, so you just filled that slot? Yes. So people came knowing, well, I'm going to do something. Yeah. Um, and, but I'm going to do whatever the dean wants me to do. <laughs> yeah. But and, we spent but, most of the day talking about student and mental students and mental health, which actually I thought was a pretty good follow on. Yeah, <laughs> it would be. Um, well, very good. Yeah, uh, that's. And, and again, what I would say would be that I, I think there is an openness and a willingness to, and in fact, a, a, a desire on the part of faculty if you can get their attention to do this because they, mm -hmm. you know, they're concerned. They really are increasingly deeply freaked out about climate change and what it means for them and their future. And, you know, so that's sort of the theory of, of, you know, make climate a class is, you know, you're teaching European history. It has absolutely nothing to do with climate change, um, but maybe it does. So you, you take a half an hour and you talk about, you know, how historians are changing what they think based on, you know, integrating climate into their histories. Um, yeah, or you look into, yeah, you, you go back and you see how climate has shaped, yes. you know, the the um, development of civil, rise and fall of civilizations. I mean, there, like I said, there's just nothing. Uh, but I think, to be honest, um, just to, to extend it a little bit more, we did ask people if they wanted some one-on-one -on -one follow up. And we're trying to figure out how to, we didn't have many takers, but we're trying to figure out. I think the next step might be for us to go into departmental meetings mm. and offer maybe 50, you know, departmental meetings are busy, but offer like a 15 minute mini thing on how climate change fits into this discipline and, and things like that. I mean, that's kind of our next thing. Um, and, you know, one thing we think is providing uh, the, um, we have 450 grads in our environmental policy and sustainable business programs. Um, and so we said, anybody that wants a guest speaker, you know, who's actually working in their field, we can find you one. You know, we've got in our crew, we've got philosophers and writers and biologists and chemists and engineers, you know, so we could we can find one, somebody for anybody. It's an um, amazing resource. And yeah, I had forgotten yeah. that. And we need to publicize that among our teachers. Yeah. So, I mean, that's just, we don't do that for everybody, but we do it for, for Bard and for the OSIN community. But you might think about um, how could you, could you create a database of alums who would be happy to speak to a chemistry class or a, you know, a mm -hmm. art class or a whatever class um, uh, about their experience being working professionals in those fields um, mm -hmm. some climate. Yeah. And um, also working on convincing students. I know this isn't really the angle we usually take with this project, but um, showing students the variety of opportunities there are in their field that has to do with climate. Yep. I mean, yeah. it, the jobs, I mean, I remember I made a poster for the Solve Climate last year, um, which was climate jobs, find a job. In, and I mean, we had jo jobs that specifically had climate in the title for Apple and McDonald's and, you know, financial corporations and just like some of them look like they probably paid really well. And I'm sure students have no idea. Um, you know, at that point, we we're pitching our climate minor at the same time that we were doing Solve Climate, you know, Make Climate a Class. But um, I think part of the teachers wanting to teach it is is hearing from their students that they want to hear about it, which is the whole point of your internship program. It's also the point next year we're hoping to um, really 
focus in on this make climate a class sort of strategy um, to be kind of integral to the teach-in, you know, sort of the first thing you do in addition to hosting some all-campus event because of the reach, if you can get it to happen. Um, but it's also students can do this, right? Students can write to all of their professors and say, please participate in this hashtag make climate a class project, right? So there's, and it's easy. It's like, it takes five minutes for students to write those emails. And, you know, that's pretty powerful. How is the internship program going right now? Not as well as last year. We, you know, we had a very dynamic teacher the last two years who really kind of motivated the crew and kept them, mm -hmm. you know, showing up and excited. And we lost them. And we have someone who's competent, but it's much more, it feels much more of like a, okay, here's the lesson on social media tonight, you know. Mm -hmm. um, go on, so it's more of a it's less of a movement feel and yeah it's more of a class feel well i have to I, I hate to cut this short but i hear my husband coming in i haven't seen him for a week and a half yeah, it's, yeah. it's okay if i sign off for tonight yeah, yeah. thank you so much this is great say hi to ryan okay. for me i will i'll tell him I have the documentation so when people ask we can refer back to this and, and just say you know you know bethany had a fabulous model you should just listen to this mm -hmm. 20 minutes and David has the agenda as well. If anybody wants to see that, he has a hard copy of that or an electronic Perfect. copy of that. Okay. Yep. All right. Thank you guys for everything you're doing. Oh, well, thank we'll you. We'll talk to you again soon. Bye. Bye, bye. bye. David, actually, maybe you could send me the link for Tobias's thing. I don't even have it. I can pop in at the beginning. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll do that. All right. So, Gilbert, uh, yeah. how are you? Go ahead, David. Yeah. I'm just saying good night. So. Yes. I'm fine. I'm fine. Thank you. Good. Yeah. So, 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 Gilbert, we're I'm I'm still sending the email. You know, trying to work on some ideas as to what we might to do to support you, and thinking that uh, maybe, um, you know, focusing in on some schools in Nairobi might be easier than trying to go out to the rural provinces, the rural um, parts of Kenya. Okay. Okay, no problem. But uh, on my behalf, I was ready to do it, even because the count is a uh, is uh, one of the neighbor the neighboring counties. Of Nairobi County. Okay, yeah, I mean, I don't know Kenya as much, but, uh, but, you know, I think, you know, let's, let's think about that. And, and I'm, again, I'm, I'm coming up with some ideas and also trying to see how we can, can support you so that you're not all by yourself in doing this. So uh, I, I should be able to get back to you pretty soon on, on, on some ideas. Yeah, because uh, on my, on my behalf, uh, here, in, in Nairobi is where you find the most educated people. Mm -hmm. uh, the most uh, people who seem that they are highly learned. So for them, I had uh, a clear strategy and uh, as a, in the forms of uh, methodology, the way I will confront the Nairobi city where the most leaders are, they are, okay? But uh, if you have seen that uh, I can start from in Nairobi, also no problem. So on the other hand, my main mission from into my heart is to see many people participate, many people willing to participate in the worldwide teaching. Because right. for now, I don't understand. When I, when I participate in this session, I always see few numbers of people, around 12, 10, yeah. So uh, my contribution was uh, to see my talent 
and my strategy, but based on the skills I learned from you by using it in order to see the some improvement here in Kenya, especially. Yeah, well, thank, thank you. Yeah, and, and I would agree. I mean, I think we, we don't have the numbers on these webinars that we had hoped. I'm not, I don't really know why, but uh, other than the people are very busy and there are a lot of other opportunities. But, you know, I, I think that um, I'm, I'm sure that within, in Kenya and Nairobi, there's a lot of different um, people and, and understanding of people um, and, and levels of understanding. And, um, you know, I think over this, these next couple of months, it's really just, you know, trying some things and, and see, see what might work with, within Kenya, um, or at least in part of Kenya. And that, um, you know, we, it's not like we're expecting a huge number of participants from Kenya, but at least to try to help to educate some people there. And then we can see what works and think about what to do after this. Yeah, sure. Uh, for instance, uh, here, uh, notice. The, there are many, many are there to deal with the climate change. And when you can stop recording away. Even here in Kenya, most they have uh, already taught. They have already been taught to make. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you not very well. Even you might want to stop recording because it's all right. You've kind of gone beyond the specifics yeah. with Bethany here. 